Hi, my name is Guy and I'm going to show you some of my favorite places in Amsterdam. I'm also going to show you how we live, different perspective of Amsterdam life and why we love it here. Hi, my name is Paul and Amsterdam is a great place for shopping. I have a shop called Open Shop and we sell clothing made by Dutch designers. Amsterdam people are very free-spirited and they're very happy usually, so they dress very happy. In Amsterdam you can get away with everything. If you want to go out dancing in your underwear, yeah, you can make it as funky and crazy as you want to. Buttons. To show it and to sell it in a completely other way. It looks like a piece of art, all the colors, all the materials. And 10 years ago, there were a few shops very nice. And we came together to make it even more special and to give it a name. And that became the Nine Streets. I just started with this concept because I really wanted to change the bags in the street. All the bags were like Nike, Adidas, Gucci, whatever, and I wanted to have my own bag with a message. Did you like that? Painter and a screen maker, a screen print maker, and so for me, one of the one of the big pluses of being able to have a shop would be able to be able to sell my own work as well. I really wanted to be do something a little bit different because there are so many prints of Amsterdam. There are so many things that you can get. So I really tried to bring my own style to it. I was looking for a new challenge, and so was my partner. And I think that for us, coming from San Francisco, one of the things that we were just blown away by was the quality of life is something that people embrace and really sort of fight for, which I think is fantastic. Nice Mayday. We're here in the Condo Marie, the world's first condom shop next to Theodore. Theodore, tell me, what's this shop about? First of all, condoms. And second of all, we love difficult questions. If people come with a size problem, we love to help them. Now, first of all, you check. So you squeeze the air out, then you turn one or two times. You put it on and then you can unroll it with two hands and there's nothing inside. I'm the owner of Gays and Gadgets, the ultimate gay shopping experience just behind me. So, what kind of stuff do you sell here? We try to be special, we try to be different. I'm so gay I can even drink straight. And what about this? This is your own CD? Yes, this is our, uh, our pride. We've uh, published this last week. It's a CD with uh, what we think are the best ever gay hits. Village People, Erasure, Rights at Fred. They're sure. all on well. They're all there. They're all the there. Cruising George Michael. Oh yes, they're all there, darling. This is not to stab your boyfriend, this is kitchenware, right?
tell me, this is a leather store. Uh, leather is quite big in Amsterdam. Is it a, a fetish thing or does it have to do anything with fetish? Of course, first it's yeah. fetish. During all the periods, yeah, leather sexuality, gay sexuality with leather. We cannot be ashamed about who we are, what we feel inside us. With an easy zipper, is this for change? Oh no, it's not yeah. for change. It's actually open, it's for something else. We are free in Amsterdam. Everybody can do whatever they like and we welcome everybody. I'm standing out of red light fashion. Where once used to be prostitutes behind these windows, you can see now some of the best Dutch designers. We are specialized in recruiting designers. We also function as advisors for a lot of young talents. We think this is a first step also for Dutch people to get to know their own talent. Yeah. And uh, being in the red light district is great fun. We've organized a peep show here last year. The girls you see in the windows, you see it's real life, it's raw. You've got a sort of an open air museum with uh, the best of the Dutch designers we've got at this moment. The red light fashion uh, district is organized by uh, HDNK and uh, they invited me within the group of uh, 14 designers to participate. The room is a former uh, room that was used by prostitutes. My designs are not extravagant in, um, in the shape, but uh, I take a lot of care of the material, so uh, I knit it or I use uh, laser cutting in uh, silk or leather. This collection uh, was based on how people wear their clothes, so it's always like hanging off. I love this area because it's really um, an area that is uh, representative or part of what people know about Amsterdam. Or Glue jeans is a new denim concept. It's a jeans which uh, is not stitched at the seams, but it's all glued. So for us, it's to emphasize the design of the denim. For now, it's all handmade. We always uh, have the intention of developing new ideas. So we, we, we call ourselves uh, avant-gardistic. Hi, my name is Jason Denham and um, we're currently in my store, the Denham store, based in uh, Amsterdam. I fell in love with the city, Amsterdam's a great place. I'm a jeans guy and everybody wears jeans here every day. We say we worship tradition but we destroy convention. What we did for here was try and create something different and create the entrance to be like a gallery space. The Blue Salad Bar is where we can do personal touch for our customers and they can choose what they like to have. The whole idea is that we have a naked jean and what happens is the, the guys can come in or the girls and they can choose their own trims and accessories and colors and this kind of stuff. I think Dutch design is a very strong handwriting. I think Dutch design in denim is something which is evolving and, and I love Amsterdam as a city because it's very, very international. My name is Frans Morner and I lived here for now 32 years. For me, Amsterdam is the fashion city of Holland. I like very much tweeds and suits. A little classic, but beautifully made and wonderful materials. A 
Liza Minnelli was in Holland, and that's a, a very good friend of mine. He lives in New York, and he's making a musical now about Liberace. I'm born in Amsterdam, and they have beautiful museums, and we have wonderful theaters and plays, and everything is here. So I'm, I'm very happy here. Amsterdam is one of the leading cities in the world when it comes to culture and art. Right now I'm standing at Museum Square, which is surrounded by the Concert Hall, the Stedelijk Museum, the Van Gogh Museum and the Rijksmuseum. Thank you for having us here. We're standing here right in front of Van Gogh's The Bedroom. I think everybody would agree it's a, it's a beautiful painting. The colors are very bright. Uh, the, the color scheme is very balanced. It's really very calculated as Van Gogh work. You use the painting to express yourself. And through expressing yourself, you comfort people. It's very sad for him because he believed uh, shortly before he died that he would never be more than a second-ranked painter. What's beautiful about Amsterdam is that it combines modern life. It's really a modern city, but it also has its tradition. The, the old canals, the old 17th century houses. So when you visit Amsterdam, you are really in a world where art, architecture, history, tradition uh, is present. The Hermitage originally is the Hermitage in St. Petersburg in Russia and it's one of the largest museums in the world. The building was already there when Peter the Great visited our city. It's a very elegant building. I always say you can't make a beautiful building out of an ugly one. It already was a very beautiful building. I'm trying to, to find people who are, who are able to change little things in, in how we deal with interior. One of the projects we are working on is a, a book, and the book is about Amsterdam. I thought uh, at some point it's, it's interesting to study who are the other creative people who made this city to what it is today. That's beautiful about Amsterdam. It's small, but very urban, very sophisticated and very elegant. There's so much beauty to see. There's so much you know, to enjoy. Droog means um, literally dry. They say that the Dutch have droge humor, dry humor. As you can see, it's a pretty outrageous um, bookshelf. It is made by lots of second-hand materials. It is made out of old and used drawers. Because, of course, nowadays people are really conscious about the environment and what you do to this environment. There's a lot of things going on. It has a lot of culture, good places to go out, and everything happens in here, in Amsterdam. If Amsterdam wants to be a creative city tomorrow, it will only be this because it was a creative city in the past.
everything is more or less around the hotel. It's a, a stroll uh, away from all the museums. The design is uh, really contemporary throughout the whole hotel. The hotel features uh, nearly 200 bedrooms, ranking from superior rooms up to the split-level loft suites. Momo is a Pan-Asian kitchen. We feature really, really cool dishes. Uh, for instance, for lunch, we have uh, the cool bento boxes uh, from, uh, from Asia. Um, we have sushi, sashimi, everything you really expect from uh, a good Pan-Asian restaurant. What makes the Lloyd's Hotel so special is that we have rooms from one to five star and what you will also find back in our food concept where we also have food which can be described as a one star item like french fries but also expensive oysters. It's not a, a completely designed a hotel. It's really a collection of different uh, designers which we find interesting. We are now in a five-star room of the Lloyd Hotel. This room was designed by Joop van Lieshout. But one of the special features of this room is also the eight-person's bed. Joop van Lieshout calls it his multi-women bed, but you can also, of course, use it as a multi-man bed. The interesting uh, uh, central part of the uh, Lloyd Hotel is our restaurant um, and this is actually our central stage as you can also uh, uh, say. You can see we are travelling through the canals of Amsterdam now, everywhere you see the canal houses. For the Pulitzer Hotel that we've got 25 houses all connected with each other just with a little door or the little tunnel. That's something so unique. You don't see that in Amsterdam. You don't see that anywhere in the world. This boat is, uh, is a great boat. It is the first original canal boat uh, built for, uh, for the city of Amsterdam. You can do great uh, private tours on it, uh, private dinings or a cocktail, or just enjoy like we are doing now. We just uh, opened uh, our newly uh, renovated restaurant, which is called Kaiserskrag 238, which is really focused on uh, uh, grill, uh, steaks, uh, fresh fish, um, which is really, really good. today to restaurant the Bellhamel. It's a great spot to have a great view over a great city. Looks good. There you go, sir. So what are we having, sir? Uh, that is the rack of lamb. With above on it, there's some sea ester. And on there, there is an uh, eggplant biscuit. At the moment we're at Pont 13, which means Ferry 13, and like 82 years ago it was used as a public transport for pedestrians and motor vehicles. These days it's a great restaurant, and let's take a look inside. It's friendly, it's um, not high design, it's uh, basic and you feel welcome if you enter the restaurant. It's uh, like you enter your friend's house and uh, people are expecting you. We work with real basic, pure, uh, pure flavors and uh, that's, uh, that's the kitchen that, that we have. The Bakker's Winkel is Dutch for bakery shop. That means we do everything around bread. And we also do, uh, always do cheese on top of it, or ham on top of it, and that makes it Dutch. All products in the Bakkerswinkel are local. That means all things we have, the, the, the ham and the cheese, is coming from Holland. 
Amsterdam restaurants are really special because I think um, it's a mixture of all cultures. Every day something new and you will find something. Every month they're opening new shops, new restaurants, cozy bars. I think that's really great to come to Amsterdam. Welcome in Amsterdam. Bar April has one of the most famous happy hours of the whole of Amsterdam. From 6 to 8, every Sunday, it's a big gay crowd coming together to have a good time. Let me show you. It's a really trendy bar. It's for gay, straight people. It's, it's a really open-minded bar. I like Amsterdam. You can be what you want to be, who you want to be. Fabulous night out in Amsterdam. I'm at Prick Bar, and it doesn't mean what you think it means. It means sparkly and bubbly, just like me. It's like every bar should be. During the day, it's like it's it's good to be here. It's good to do, just relax and have a beer. But at night, it's just dancing. And, and all these cute party. boys are coming in. Uh huh. What makes Amsterdam nightlife so fun to me is the diversity. We can draw a mixed crowd, gay and straight, and people are quite open to each other, and I, I quite like that. We're like an open-minded club, it's not really only for gays. We don't work with a list, everybody can come in. A lot of uh, designers are coming here. We're going to Club Jimmy Hu tonight, one of the most exclusive clubs in Amsterdam. You really have to be on the list to get in, and we're gonna get in for a really good party. I'm coming here for uh, a special party. It's fucking pop queers, with crazy people coming, outrageous outfits. It's basically a party with pop music for queer people and whomever likes queer people. So it's like, it's all about love and and feeling free to do whatever you want. Amsterdam is a global village. With you guys. That is. Yeah. Yeah.